Hey, yo, artists and musicians. Who, us? Yeah, do you want your own vinyl records? Yeah, but I can't order a thousand of them. Or wait like a year to get them. Yeah, we're going on tour in two months. Check out our friends lathecuts.com. They'll make you vinyl singles in quantities as small as 50 copies and as quickly as three or four weeks. Get out of here. You heard me right. All their pricing is a la carte, and they can help you pick a package that fits your budget. Okay, who will we talk to about this? You need to email my buddy Mike. His address is lathecuts at yahoo.com. And if you mention low profile, you'll get a 10% overrun on your order. So if I order 50 records... Mike's going to send you 55. If I order 75, I guess you would get 82 and a half? Something like that. Remember, you got to mention low profile to get that deal, and it won't be around forever. What was that address again? That's lathecuts at yahoo.com. Custom made records in small quantities. Mention low profile to get a 10% overrun on your order. And emailing now. From the messiest desk in Olympia, Washington, I'm Markley Morrison, and this is Low Profile. Just want to check in before we get the show started about Sherler Sundays and how that's going. So it's live episode tapings and full performances from a great variety of really talented people. The last one was John Atkins and Doug Marsh, and it was a banger. Uh, next week, it's Michael Hurley on Sunday, July 2nd, and then Lavender Country on July 10th. These are every Sunday at 3 behind the Carnegie Library in Olympia, Washington. Hope you can make it out. Lauren Connors is a guitarist, poet, and painter. Since the 1970s, he has released over 50 albums of primarily improvised material, developing his unique avant-garde playing style informed by early blues and 20th century composers. He's collaborated with a diverse array of likewise important musicians like John Fahey, Sonic Youth, Jim O'Rourke, Kath Bloom, and Alan Licht. His most frequent cohort, though, is also his partner, Suzanne Langy. She and Lauren joined me from Brooklyn at their friend Bob Bellarue's home studio. Bob kindly engineered this episode so you wouldn't have to listen to a Zoom call, so thanks, Bob. We are talking today about Lauren's family doorway into music and the lessons he learned along the way, his body of work, Suzanne and Lauren's aesthetic partnership, and we'll also hear Lauren's guitar improvisations in real time throughout the interview. Suzanne and Lauren also improvise a piece together just for today's show. Right now, you're hearing an excerpt from Arborvite, an album from Lauren Connors and David Grubbs. Before we get to today's interview, here's David with a few words about Lauren. This is David Grubbs, happy to say a few words of introduction about Lauren Connors, one of my very favorite musicians, one of my very favorite guitar players. I think Lauren is about uh, the most distinctive guitar player that I can think of. Most people can recognize Lauren's tone within a matter of seconds. He's a fearless uh, solo artist. Uh, he's a terrific improviser, and I consider myself incredibly fortunate not only to, to know Lauren and to have had conversations with him, but to have had the opportunity to play with him live a number of times, um, uh, including one uh, duo studio LP called Arbor Vitae. So you're about to learn a huge amount about Lauren, and um, if you've never heard his music before, uh, I think you're about to have your mind blown. Well, I thought a nice way to get into it would be to first maybe talk about um, Mary Mazikane, your mother, um, and the influence that her music career had on you. Because yeah, it's, it's, it's profound. It's profound influence. It's probably the only real influence. Other than, than the rock and roll record they should play in my house. And, uh, she was, she, she, music lessons 
up in the piano room all the time. People would come to the house and play and, and sing, and, and she showed them how to sing with an open throat and, and that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. But as far as her relationship with me goes, that you know, was pretty intense. I used to go to church with her every, every well, like every morning almost, and she used to do funerals. Did you and ever and sing with her? Did Did you pick up any singing skills from her? No, nothing. I was, I was the only one in the family who didn't sing at all. My brother sings. My brother uh, was an opera singer for a while, and my sister had folk groups and singing groups and stuff. Uh, I never sang at all. <laughs> um, I often was uh, sort of bewildered by on your uh, your earlier solo and uh, and duet recordings with various singers um, what the what the moaning sound was and that was someone told uh, me that was coming from you yeah it's just a singer like the say, say uh, uh, some jazz people do yeah sure I hear that yeah. maybe in Mingus a little bit, or yeah, 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 yeah Mingus, things like that. A lot of jazz guys, uh, there's vocalizations too. It's all involuntary, comes from your throat, and uh, you just have no control over it. Yeah, it's just it's a part of the playing. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, it just can becomes part of the thing. Do you still uh, have a tendency to to do that, even though no. I know I, you're I usually not on mic? I shake it off. I shake it off. I don't, I don't do that anymore. Keep your mouth shut and play. Yeah, keep your mouth shut. yeah that's right. Yeah, keep your mouth shut and play. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And are are you playing very often these days? Yeah, maybe once a month. Yeah. Yeah. I figure, I figure like I should be playing a lot more. It could have been a lot more for me, but if, if it wasn't, it's, it's not. It's not there really. Opportunities to play aren't really around, but I, I play enough though. Well, I mean, you've amassed a huge discography. Yeah, it, because most of the stuff I do is, is is recorded. Good way to get a big discography, I guess. Yeah, 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 right. Yeah. <laughs> um, I know that you originally would record everything on cassette. You do some yeah. four track layering things from yeah. time to time. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. You still yeah. have a cassette player that works? Or yeah, I forgot, I, for, uh, yeah, no, I forgot how to work it. I, I knew how to work it during the nineties, but I, I forgot now how to, how to really work it. Well, you had a machine that worked really well. Yes, yeah, we couldn't work it. It was digital. But then yeah, somebody yeah, yeah. stole it, and yeah, after yeah. and they stopped. They had stopped producing it. It was a Tascam Porta Five. Yeah. And then after that, you never found a machine that you could really work with comfortably again. Yeah, right, yeah. So that thief. <laughs> Everything went, went, went digital, and, and I, I went uh, out the door. That was the voice of Suzanne Langille? Yeah. Suzanne Langy. Yeah. Yes. Oh, thank you. That's Suzanne right. Langy. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I recognize your voice, but ah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Well, Lauren, I, I've just uh, read for the first time your collection of haikus oh, yeah. and prose, yeah. uh, Autumn Sun. And I, I was reading it while listening to uh, some of your recordings. I actually was listening to uh, the one that you recorded at the graveyard. What we're talking about the curse of Midnight Mary. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, Midnight Mary's a big deal in Connecticut out there in New Haven. It's a, it's a ghost story that uh, people believe in. Uh, some people really believe in it. Uh, yeah. I, I just did, uh, I did a, uh, I kneeled down on a, a gravesite and, and did, did acoustic guitar pieces. It's, it's, it's fun. It's, it's fun because it was nighttime and I figured I maybe we made a ghost or something. Yeah, it's very, very ethereal. Is, yeah. is your uh, most of your body of work, I'd say, is. Yeah.
my head around where uh, where your mind must go when you're creating these pieces. Are you totally lost yeah, yeah. when it when it's happening? Yeah, completely. Uh, I don't really know where the hell it comes from. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well that makes two of us. I I just get the the whole world disappears. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. But it came from blues. Yeah, it came from blues, which is different than most people playing today these days. It's, 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 it's coming out of people like 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 me from the thirty years ago maybe. Uh, uh, but uh, and it's done on computers now. And my my thing comes from more from from the way way past way, way, way in the past like. It's a guitar base right, rather than a computer base, but but uh, a lot of it's similar to what I do. Yeah. Sure, sure. Like um, your your collaboration with uh, Oren Embarki. Yeah, yeah, right. He he he's a computer guy. He uses a lot of electronics. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's cool to see um, those sort of things coexist. Yeah, right, yeah. perception of a lot of the collaborative works is that people come to you and want to get into your space yeah, Are, yeah do you yeah. S- do you seek out collaborations yourself no no yeah. uh, uh, no, no. They, 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 they all come to me yeah which is kind of nice but it's just it's strange i never thought i ever like i was affecting people that they want to play with me without even practicing at all or even knowing each other yeah yeah I mean, these shows I do are with people like that I've never played with, don't, don't practice with, and, and don't, don't, I've never even heard the music a lot of times. Your latest release at this time is the uh, the collaboration with Kim Gordon from Sonic yeah. Youth, right? Yeah. It was the second time we, 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 we did it together. We did, we did the show like a few years ago. And that's what's on the record, the show that you did a few years ago. And then he just recently did a performance with her again. Oh, okay. And that was something that the Issue Project Room, which is an art space in Brooklyn, put together. Yeah. Hence the title, At Issue. There you go. (laughs) Nice double entendre there. Yeah. (laughs) Um, How premeditated was that? Was that just a show up, plug in, and go for it? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's it. That's all my shows are like that. Show up, plug in, and go for it. Yeah. It's all improvised. Yeah, all it, yeah. Did, you, you've got like some kind of concept about composition. Yeah. Behind it. Yeah, I think of all my stuff as compositions rather than improv. So they're all compositions. I studied composers when I was in college and after college at Yale over there. You know, like people like Carl Ruggles and Charles Ives and, and Anton Weber and, and uh, people like that. My favorite was, was Carl Ruggles. I don't know if you know him. I don't. What's a, what's a good piece? That's uh, a good primer. Uh, Man of the Mountains or, or uh, Lilacs. He yeah, made about 45 minutes worth of music in his whole life. It was all very intense. Wow. Yeah. And you, you just took it the other direction. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, right. Just Everything. Yeah. yeah. And you're still painting, I take it? Yep, I'm still painting. In fact, I'm in my room now with one of my paintings. 
in it. That's good. Oh, Bob's got one over there? Yeah, you got two of them. But the bigger, bigger one and the smaller one. When did you start painting, Lauren? 1969, in college. I had a great teacher. His name is Mike Scope. He was a student of... Uh, of uh, Meshevik, who was a student of uh, Rodin. Yeah, there was like a, an oral tradition of instruction yeah. on aesthetics uh, that he yeah. got that was passed down from Auguste Rodin to Ivan Mestrovic to Michael Scope and to yeah. Lauren. So, so it's, I guess my music is French orientated. <laughs> nice. And you're carrying the torch. That's right, yeah. You're like so interdisciplinary. That um, whether with the writing, the painting, guitar, even you, piano is a thing that you've been yeah, dabbling I, I, with. I play a little, little bit of piano, yeah. If it's, if it's, if the piano's nice, I can play it. I heard for the first time the the red painting piece. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. yeah. That was the piano piece. electric piano, but it sounded just like a, a, a real piano. Oh, I, yeah, I couldn't even tell. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Do you uh, feel like you go into a different sort of headspace when you switch instruments? Uh, no, 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 not really. It's all also, also the same. Yeah. yeah. Even when I switch maybe it's just all the same. Music and painting and words, it's, it's all the same to me. Yeah. Do you keep a practice of writing? No, I, I, I haven't done it in a long time. Yeah. yeah. It's pain and guitar playing these days. Do you think you could tell me, though, about your uh, fascination with haiku that happened yeah. so long ago? Yeah, it was in the 1980s. I wrote this book. Uh, Autumn Sun had like, uh, par little paragraphs of, of, of like of what I've done that, 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 that particular day. You have haiku mixed in with prose writing. Yeah, that's a nice juxtaposition. Yeah. Um, kind of like journal entries. Yeah. And yeah, then right. a three-line reflection on that. Yeah, right, yeah, 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 yeah. It's actually a tradition. It's a haiku yeah. tradition. It's called hypen. Yeah. Right. It's, 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 it's yeah. People, don't, people haven't picked up on it here in, in this country. It's an old Japanese thing. From, from way a long time ago. Yeah, I, I read the essay um, that's included at the end of the at the end of that book, and uh, yeah, I yeah, I guess maybe I'm not the biggest poetry buff, so I didn't realize that that was part of the tradition there. Mm. What drew you to that form? Because you studied it for a while, right? Yeah, yeah. I studied it in college. My stuff has always been haikuish. My, my, my music is haikuish. Everything I do is haikuish. It's just kind of like say what you have to say and get off. Put your, put your mm -hmm. instrument down. Just say what you got to say and put your stuff down. Like yeah. no embellishing. Yeah, right. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. So you you brought your guitar, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Would would you care to give us a little something? Okay, all right. Okay. Thank you. 
Beautiful. What do you call it? I don't know. Something. I think of a name for something. For something. Yeah. Yeah. Is it is it um, difficult to name all these pieces that you create? So it's starting to be a little bit tedious. I think it's just certain number of them now. Like, oh sh! Now I gotta name it. And so yeah, you gotta name it now. <laughs> and you walk around with names in your head. I just want to read off the uh, the track listing for um, in Burn yeah. that you did with Jim O'Rourke. Yeah, that's that's all his titles. He he titled that. Yeah, well, man. Yeah. Four tracks. Number one. Now, who are these guys? <laughs> Number two. Still going. <laughs> Number three. Are they going to stop? <laughs> Number four. You can stay if you want. But I'm gonna leave. It's <laughs> 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 Jim. He's a funny guy. Are you still in touch with Jim? Oh, well, he moved away to, to, to Japan, so I don't see him anymore. But I still yeah. I, I email him sometimes. Yeah. 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 They send each other messages, especially whenever there's a disaster. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Make sure each other is okay. Yeah, right. That's good. Good yeah. looking out. Yeah. Um. I read that he is the one who introduced you to one of my other favorite guitarists, John Fahey. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there a story there? Do, do you have like a was there like a little John Fahey experience? 
Well, I, I, we got along good, good together because we were more of the same age than Jim, Jim and his friends were. Mm. Yeah, I was like maybe five or six years younger than him. You met um, in Chicago, right? Yeah, Chicago. And one time he was sick and he was taking his, uh, his uh, cough medicine. He was gulping it down on the bottle and the guy came up to him and wants to interview him and said, and he said no, he's the guy I should be talking to. So that made me feel good. John Fahey's last release that actually came out after his death, he dedicated a song to, uh, to yeah. Lauren. Yeah. Lauren had a nickname, Guitar Roberts, and he liked it. So he used that when he dedicated it to him. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, I've, yeah. I've had a few nicknames at any time. Yeah. <laughs> Guitar Roberts, where, how did you land on that one? Oh, uh, I remember. Uh, uh, it was Blackie, Blackie for a while. Blackie Connors. Uh, oh, Suzanne sings a song about Blackie on... Uh, on the yeah. Enchanted Forest. Yeah. Oh my God. You can't believe we knew, thought of that. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 do, I do some research. I guess. I like her, Blackie. Will she disappear? Crow. Yeah. yeah. That's you, Lauren? I guess so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, well, I thought that that record in particular, The Enchanted Forest, is just, um, you know, it's lovely and it's, it's a bit of a departure from um, a lot of the more, like, kind of soundscape yeah, right. pieces. More in the folk tradition which we were definitely part of a long time ago yeah yeah you were very adherent to that early yeah. on you, you recently did another like unaffected solo acoustic record how recent was that the volume 10 volume 10 uh yeah 1980 something like that that was oh, a really? that was a newly discovered recording. Oh, oh yeah. okay. Yeah, this yeah. this yeah. one here. Yeah, he performed it live back in what, the late nineteen seventies maybe? Yeah, yeah, nineteen seventy nine. Oh okay. Yeah. All right. So it's yeah. just unearthed. Yeah, yeah, unearthed. Somebody See, discovered it. I do some it. research, but <laughs> <laughs> somebody discovered it at the Columbia University Music Library. It was part yeah. of an archive of a local radio station. style um, and everything to this sort of more percussive immersive thing that yeah. you're doing these days I guess John John Fahey was sort of leaning into that direction a little bit too his final years yeah. uh, that's right I, Lauren, Lauren actually didn't use a bottleneck though he did all of those sounds with his hands in yeah. his early years, he tuned the strings down 
um, oh. to be really loose, and so so he could bend them all over the place. Yeah. Oh. That's how he got those sounds early on. Yes, 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 I was yes, wondering yes. how you got those snaky sounds no, yeah. out of there. Yes, yes. Uh oh, did I just give away your secret? No, Noodles. No. We'll we'll edit that out, okay? <laughs> 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 could elaborate Suzanne maybe you can jump in too um, about how your journey began together because you've been well you've, you've been an item and a collaborative duo for god what 35 think, years yeah, 30 years 35 years yeah long time how did that come to be <laughs> you want me to explain yeah. yeah. Oh, you know, we met at a couple performances and mm -hmm. um I don't know, it was it was actually really kind of strange. We just got together almost immediately. You know, we just kind of started kicking things out of our lives to make room for each other and developed over time, not just through the music but also through writing. Uh and then later with visual art, um uh, an aesthetic partnership. Wow. What were the sacrifices you made initially? Do you... Oh, I don't know. None of his friends understood me and none of, none of my friends understood him. So, okay. so everybody was like, what are you two doing together? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was, uh, yeah, it was, it, was, it was a very controversial coming together somehow. <laughs> but eventually, I guess... People have come to accept that we are, in fact, together and been in together long enough. So there you go. It happens. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can relate to, like, especially when um, two people come together seemingly out of nowhere, yeah. like, so quickly. Um, yeah. I went on tour, and while I was on the tour, I met um, a former girlfriend good and stayed good friend of mine uh like halfway down the coast and we decided that night that we were just gonna get married oh. she was gonna move to washington from california and uh wow and so i and so i got back home and i told people but nobody believed it was true at first <laughs> because we actually got engaged on april fool's day <laughs> <laughs> and so for the longest time no one knew whether it was happening until she finally moved up here like oh okay this is a real thing <laughs> like, <laughs> that's good you got to keep him guessing <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah yeah no that's that's really wonderful and you know lauren and i came from a very different i mean i was from the west coast pacific northwest he was from the east coast and I had completely different training. I was more immersed in uh, literature. And uh, so there were a lot of differences on the surface. But mm -hmm. I think we really, we really figured it out when we went to an art gallery um, in Manhattan. We just took a trip in, um, Museum of Modern Art, I think. and. I had not had any training in art. I didn't know anything about, you know, anyone other than the, the most completely famous painters ever. I just didn't know anything. And he brought me into a room full of modern art and asked me which pieces I liked. And I looked around the room and I said, that's great, that's great, that's good, that's all right, that's nothing blah, blah, blah. I pointed to all of these different paintings. And he goes, and I was, all the great paintings were the paintings that he's, he's totally in love with. And he goes, how did you do that? How did you do that? How did you know that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's the basics about aesthetics and how, how, how deep does something reach? Mm. That's what it's really all about. Thank <laughs> you. 
Hi, I'm Anna Winter. Do you love listening to Low Profile? There are several ways you can support this show. You can sign up for flexible monthly donations at patreon.com slash lowprofile. Those donations help Markley keep this show running smoothly and are vital to Low Profile's progress at the cost of a cup of coffee once a month. If you join the Patreon community, you can get advanced episode releases, behind-the-scenes exclusives, and early access to merchandise. If you can't contribute financially, it always helps if you tell a friend about your favorite episodes, share about Low Profile on social media, subscribe for free on your favorite podcast platform, and give us a rating and review whenever you listen. Low Profile also receives in-kind support thanks to these independent Olympia businesses, San Francisco Street Bakery, Schwartz's Deli, Rainy Day Records, Old School Pizzeria, and Schurler Easy Premium Shitty American Lager from Three Magnets Brewing Company. And most of all, thanks to you, the listener, for tuning in. Now, let's get to today's show. Um, so you guys have also together... Uh what I've heard described as a blues rock band. Yeah. Haunted, Haunted House. Haunted House, yeah, that's right. Yeah. It's kind of over with another. It, it doesn't sound like canned heat. No. <laughs> no. Um, but that's a, that's a quartet, right? Right. Closest thing I've heard to uh, pop music, maybe. Yeah. That would be quite a stretch. Oh, well, sure. <laughs> but we appreciate the effort. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, you've got you got a drummer, two actually, guitars, and a singer. Actually, there's no there's no. Uh, it's not like a drummer, it's one single handheld frame drum, a Persian doff. And Neil Murray makes all those sounds on that little, that, that one large handheld frame drum. It's like a big tangerine, a tambourine. Yeah, it's like a giant tambourine. <laughs> yeah. Without the bells. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no bells. It's got little, it, there's rings inside. Oh, uh, okay. So, but yeah, would you intense. tell him he's not a drummer? <laughs> no. He doesn't, doesn't want to be a drummer anymore. He wants to we be, call uh, him a percussionist, but percussionist. who knows? Sure, sure. <laughs> He's also a sitarist, he so you sitarist know, so. we never put Neil in a box. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, and Andrew Burns was the other guitarist, and the haunted house broke up when he moved back to Atlanta and yeah. then to the West Coast, and we never tried to replace him because he was the perfect fit. Mm. So. So how long was that? A thing. We, 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 we went for ten years, but we, we, we took a, a, lot, a lot of years off. Yeah. The first, the first bunch of recordings, in two thousand and twenty years later, there's a bunch more, and that's gone. Did that stuff come out as a record at all? I could only. Yeah, it's two I records. Could, there were two records. There's a CD and a record. Yeah. And then we're actually pulling a couple pieces that um, that were never put on record and that's going to be coming out on the Family Vineyard label. It's going to be a, I think it's a 10 inch mm. because it's two long pieces and one side is going to be a version of Blue mm. Ghost Blues mm. the other side is Frankie and Johnny. Mm. You got a record with, with Neil. What? You got a record with Neil. 
Neil. What about Neil? You did a record with Neil. Oh, yeah, Neil and I did a couple records together. Fantastic Neil. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. Neil's playing. Come with the payphone calls. What? What was that again, Suzanne? Oh, the record that I did with Neil is called Come When the Raven Calls. And actually, the first song on it is from the Enchanted Forest record. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, a reworking? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Real good. Yeah, I, oh, I'm looking forward to getting that 10 inch. I think it's I missed the boat on any of the older material. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, nobody's ever done Frankie and Johnny quite like the way we do it. <laughs> yeah, playing the hits. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Well, let's see here. Sorry about that, just trying to sort my notes real quick here. Ah. So, um, what, how did, how did the uh, relationship with Family Vineyard come to be? They seem to be very dedicated to keeping your work in their rotation. Yeah. Yeah, um, Eric Weddle initially was part of another label called Secretly Canadian. Mm, mm -hmm. And so that's how we first got to know him. And uh, a couple things came out on Secretly Canadian. And right. one of them was uh, a record called Let the Darkness Fall, which yeah, was... A great film. Yeah, Lauren and me and Andrew Burns from Haunted House and David Danielle. Andrew and D David were part of a band called San Augustine at the time. And so that came out on Secretly Canadian. And then Eric decided to start his own label. And he basically, you know, kind of made an internal commitment to be really serious about putting out Lauren's music, especially his solo music. So he's been, he's just been putting out record after record over the years. The Departing of a Dream series, it's kind of a tribute to Miles Davis, all kinds of things. Yeah, he's, he's been just wonderful. I didn't put that together that that was a sort of tribute to Miles Davis. Man, how good by Miles. So, did you ever? Did you ever get to see Miles? Or uh, yeah, he, fell, he fell off the stage the time I saw him. The drummer had to jump, jump over with his drums and catch him. He fell off the stage. He yeah. said. Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I don't think he got hurt, but he's in bad shape. Yeah, but Lauren always, always liked how Miles could work with silence. Yeah. Yeah. His long notes too. Long, long notes extended out, out to nowhere. Yeah, especially that record. Uh, uh, he lived in Madly. Which one again? He, he loved in Madly. He, uh, he uh, loved. He loved in Madly. Yeah, and then get up with it record. Didn't you also really like Miles's bass player? Oh yeah, Henderson. His, his bass player was, was phenomenal. Henderson. He's phenomenal. Hmm. His sense of timing was something else. Have you ever played bass? Yeah, I used to play bass in rock bands in the sixties. Oh yeah. A long time ago, yeah, a long time ago. Like party bands or? Yeah, yeah, weddings. We did weddings and parties and stuff like that. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, I played bass. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, uh, so 
Are are you still a rock and roll guy at all? Sort of. Yeah. 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 Sort of. Yeah. What do you? Yeah. yeah more more than you're... more than a lot of people around around these days. Uh huh. Yeah. 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 It's not. Uh... I wouldn't say rock and roll is necessarily thriving these days. No, it's not. It's kind of dying out. Yeah. It's too bad. play a bass guitar bass guitar on one of your records lauren yeah which one it was, it was called uh, the pride of a dream by one oh the first departing yeah, of a dream it, it had a lot of CD. different instruments on it ha okay all string instruments do you have a collection of string instruments at home no just, just a guitar i use all the time and a bigger old guitar which i, I just let sit in the corner and die uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> how how long have you all been in New York? Uh, four, three years. Three, three, two years. Since 1990. Yeah. Mm. That opened up some new doors for you. Yeah, it opened up everything for me. Yeah, I was, I was kind of just like a New Haven bum. <laughs> bum, my uh, guy. Uh, <laughs> New uh, Haven bum? Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, yeah, I, I guess, like, in Connecticut, you're working m mostly more in isolation. Yeah, isolation, that's, that's the word. And, uh... Uh, I noticed that people, when I got older, people, the younger people, were uh, making all kinds of plans for, the, for themselves. And it was just different to me. I, I never made a plan for myself or anything ever when I was younger. Everyone plans out their lives down here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Lauren's not, never been a businessman and he's never been a planner. Yeah. The world just kind of happens Yeah. to him. Mm. Yeah. Well, um, before we go, I was wondering if the two of you might do an improvised piece together. Yeah, all right. Wait, 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 no. Is that okay? Yeah. You want to do one right now? Right, 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 right now. If you're in the mood. Yeah. If not, we could do it later. standing among the rocks when I looked down to the river and I saw it an eagle rising from the trees And I knew that someone was going to die. Someone good was going to die. There's nothing you can do when you see that eagle. Nothing you can change. The price we pay for love is the pain of loss.
counting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Do you have any upcoming releases or performances that you're excited about? Uh, no. Good. Nothing. Good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You've done enough. Yeah. Now enough they're, the world. they're coming, but they're just coming very slowly because of the problem with all the pressing plants. Yeah. But he yeah. does he does have something that someday will come up that's called at the top of the stairs. It's really mysterious. That's and with scary. Alan and that's a fabulous record. Yeah. If anybody ever gets to hear it, if the vinyl pressing factories will ever regurgitate it, then uh-huh. you'll have it. It's, come a, out really. <laughs> it's, it's trapped ghost, in production yeah. right now. Yeah. Trapped. Well God. Hey, it's lovely to meet you guys. I think we did yeah. it. Yeah. I think we did a show. That's yeah, right, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I love what you do. Always have, always will. Thanks. This has been the 58th episode of Low Profile. My guests today, Lauren Connors and Suzanne Langy. Thanks again to guest engineer Bob Bellarue. The artwork for this episode was painted by Nathan Burko Gibson. Music and links relevant to this and all previous episodes can be found at lowprofilepodcast.com. Next time on Low Profile... Brett Lunsford joins returning co-host Madison Nadine and I on location in Anacortes, Washington. If you recognize Brett's name, you're probably a fan of his music with Beat Happening or D+. That all comes up, but mostly we get into his new book, Sounding for Harry Smith. I'm going to play you out today on a D D-plus song I love called Rusted. Catch you later. Just a little bit rusted Don't
drink doubles Get you in trouble Get you in trouble Just a little bit rusted Shirlerbeard.com. 